Hey guys, welcome to Interesting Winter Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Varus updated complete guide. And as usual guys, of course, uh, remember to take a look at our Varus basic guide uh, for of course his skills, leveling order, tips and tricks as well as combos. And of course I will put that up in the cards above for your viewing pleasure. So without further ado, let's jump into Lethality Varus's loadout. So Lethality Varus is pretty, pretty simple. Basically, you want to start off with a mana immune. This is, of course, going to give you mana, ability haste, as well as attack damage. And when you evolve it to mirror mana, it's going to give your attacks as well as uh, your abilities uh, bonus damage. Now, uh, of course, this works mainly on your Q, which is, of course, the main point of the Dali Varus. Next up, you go for Yomu's Ghost Blade. You almost always go for Yomu's Ghost Blade as your first Itali item because it's pretty much the best Itali item. It gives you 55 AD. 15 ability haste, 15 armor penetration, as well as when you uh, pop your stacks, you're going to get 4 seconds of bonus 25% attack speed. So, for the boots, you have two options. Your first option, which is my preferred option, is going for the Ionian Boots of Lucidity, and this is going to give you more cooldown. So, this gives you 30 ability haste. Varus' cooldowns are pretty long. His W cooldown is long, his Q cooldown is honestly pretty long, and so is his E. So, honestly, this cooldown boost is going to allow you to, of course, uh, cast your spells a lot more often, which is, of course, going to lead to more damage. But the other option is, of course, straight up going for the Lethality Boots. Lethality Boots, of course, give you 8 extra armor pen, 30 AD, and 45 movement speed. Of course, this is amazing as well, because you get even more Lethality on top of what you're already building. So that's also an option. Next, you have Sorelda's Grudge, of course, armor penetration, the slow, as well as the damage and ability haste. Uh, you can go for a Mole Reminder if you need it. Um, to counter anti-heal, then you put in another another lethality item. Um, Serpent's Fang is good most of the time, gives you again 15 uh, pen, 50 attack damage, and 10 ability haste, as well as the Shield Reaver to counter shields. Uh, of course, you also have Dust Blade, which also um, you know gives you the same pen, a little bit more uh, AD, and of course has that like kind of passive. Now you only go for this in an uh, instance where there's completely no shielding on the enemy team, which happens from time to time. You also have Age of Night, um, which gives you 8 armor penetration, and but it will grant you the spell shield to kind of immune yourself from, uh, from um, uh, the next hostile like uh, attack or spell. Then you have, of course, a little bit of health and, of course, the AD as well. And finally, I like to top it off with a GA, because most of the time, by the time you reach the last item, um, getting, more lethal getting more lethality is not really beneficial anymore, because um, you get to a point where... Uh, safety is more important and you know getting more lethality is not really gonna help you all that much because you can already one-shot people like there's no point in getting more lethality so getting like um, the defensive options are gonna be better so next up his runes so of course lethality Varus you want to go for first strike Varus of course can prop first strike very easily because of his long range on his Q so first strike of course give you gives you the goal gives you the damage and then we actually go for domination now the reason for for going domination is if we take a look at precision like, Brutal doesn't help Varus that much. Like, neither does Triumph. And on this row, Coup de Gras does help. And on this row, I guess, um, you know, Bloodline does kind of help. But honestly, you're doing, like, burst damage. You're not doing, like, DPS. So, um, Precision is not really helpful. So, what's better is actually Domination. So, Scorch gives you additional poke. Helps you in lane as well as in later uh, later game fights. Um, you know, when people just going to take extra damage, basically. Then Mark of the Week is amazing because it, whenever you cast a spell on someone, it's going to increase the damage they take for by 4 to 7%. So if you um, start off with your ulti and then you charge your Q and launch it, this is going to let that Q deal uh, extra percentage damage, which is completely uh, you know, completely bonkers. It's, co it's really, really amazing and just increases your, your like combo damage by a lot. Finally, at the last one, you can take Eyeball Collection, which of course gives you that extra AD. And when you stack it fully, you're going to get even more AD. And for the secondary rune, you have a couple options. You can go for defensive options, like the bone playing, for example. But I don't really think Varus really needs uh, defensive options so badly. So I actually like to go for Coup de Gras, which of course gives you bonus damage when the enemies are low, which helps you, of course, snipe off low HP targets or just deal extra damage against whoever's low. Finally, for the spells, Flash, and you can go for either Exhaust if you're against a lot of assassins, or if you're not, Ghost is going to be a lot better for the extra mobility uh, to kite around fights. So all that out the way, let's jump into talking about our gameplay. Okay, so now we're moving on to the gameplay. And honestly, I have a lot to talk about this particular gameplay. Because, as you guys can see from my pick order, I actually got 
um, Varus after I saw basically the entire enemy team except the Yone. So why is this very important? Because Lethality Varus is basically amazing against a squishy team. Now you can play him against like one tank that's fine because you can still target the rest of his team. You don't want to play it against like a team that has like a Orin top, like a, let's say a Xin Zhao in the jungle or Galio in the mid lane. You don't want to play him against this kind of team. You want to play him against a team that is super squishy. Just look at this enemy team. It's like a it's like a dream. We have like a Jin Nami in the bot lane. Of course, they are both really squishy. We have a Vayne top, an Ari mid, and a Yone jungle. Now, all five of these champs are incredibly squishy. So, this match I actually decided to pivot, and I actually went for uh, full on like lethality. I just maxed out my lethality. I actually wanted to go for something like. Age of Night, I didn't go for that, I went for Dust Blade. I went to go for cooldown boots, I didn't go for that, I just went straight up for, uh, of course, <coughs> my Lethality boots, the boots of dynamism. So here Twitch is coming in for a gank, I get rooted by Jin to kind of bait him in. Here um, my Leona gets a good engage, Jin just basically gets run down, and we already have our first kill of the game. Well technically Twitch does, but um, you know, we do pick up a kill, we, our team picks up for his blood. So, something else that I want to point out is that in this match, technically speaking, I could have skipped mana mean. I could have gone straight for Yomus into like full lethality uh, because this match was so good for lethality. I probably should have, but um, honestly, I wasn't really sure because the, the main like good part about getting mana mean is that if you don't get extremely far ahead, uh, mana mean gives you very good scaling and it makes your like mid to late game a lot better if you have mana mean. Whereas if you go for full lethality without mana mean, and you're not doing like well enough, um, then you're gonna like suffer a little bit more in terms of your damage. So another thing that some people might ask is how about Essence Reaver? Well, I would say that on Lethality Varus, as we covered in one of our previous videos, Essence Reaver is indeed really good. However, reason why we're not going for Essence Reaver in this match is because Essence Reaver of course increases your damage by a percentage. But in this case, just because of how squishy the enemy team is, it's better to just straight up get more lethality and that will increase our damage by even more. So that's just straight up better. So that's why in this game we don't go for Essence Weaver and uh, if you want to go for Essence Weaver in other games you can. But yeah. So here you can see, um, you know, not doing too much damage yet. We have basically nothing so far. We only have a tier. But when, you know, we start like getting fed and, and like and all, we're gonna start like like you know deleting people because when we get like uh, up to like our Yomus for example we're gonna just start deleting people so here anyways for now we're just playing the early game conservatively we all have already hit level 5 uh, of course we could look for like a, a all-in kind of fight uh, because we do have our ultimate and Leona also has her ultimate but unfortunately the wave is not in a good position um, and you know it's really difficult to fight them in this spot <clears throat> so for now um, you know, we're just gonna farm minions, nothing too big, and we're just gonna just poke people down, you know, as we do. Now, as I mentioned, normally you want to use various Q to poke enemies. Now, best case scenario is you can hit minions and enemies at the same time, but it's more important to hit enemies. Here, we are going for an all in onto the Jin. Here, we managed to get a good amount of damage in, but I believe my Q was interrupted by Nami's ultimate, and we are not able to finish him off, at least not yet. Here, we're charging the Q, he ends up rooting himself because of the ulti. And uh, we are actually able to finish him off, uh, mainly because he just rooted himself because of his ulti. Uh, but we could have gotten the snipe as well if he did move. But since he did not, it's a kind of a free and easy kill for us. So, um, lovely start for us. Get ourselves a 2v2 kill in the bomb lane. Complete our mana moon and get ourselves the boots. So here of course with the mana moon, we're going to just start charging our mana moon by tossing like random spells. Um, as we're walking to lane, uh, etc. And Dragon is of course spawning really soon. Now Varus ult cooldown is ex actually actually extremely low, so we're gonna have our ult uh, by the time Dragon is up for sure. And in fact, it's already back up like right now. So if we need it in the lane, we can just use it as well. Here Twitch is coming in for another gang, coming in from invisibility. Uh, honestly, there's nobody in the lane at the moment, so I'm not quite sure what he's doing. He gets spotted by Jin Trap. Uh, either way, Leona manages to actually hit the ulti, I'm able to chain with my ulti and we're able to just basically one shot um, the Jin right here. Twitch finishes off Nami as well. Unfortunately, we do end up trading um, and Leona does end up going down, but overall it's still a good trade. Now here me and Twitch um, can try to pick up some tower plates. 
Yone is forced to flash away because we have double ADC, uh, a lot of damage from us, and he was of course scared for his life. So here the dragon has actually spawned. Um, I don't actually really need to back because I have like basically almost full health. I get uh, myself the plating gold, and I have like still about like over half mana. Nothing too much to buy if I back anyway. So here I'm gonna get another plate. So I get two plates, 300 gold uh, for me. And now I can make my way over to the dragon, if I so choose. But since Twitch is actually going mid, I'm actually just going to stay here and uh, let's see what I can do in terms of clearing the wave. You can see that the enemy team is already somewhat on the dragon. Leona is just trying to stop them on her own. Here I'm scrolling to the fight, so I end up walking into the crack wall. Like here I'm ghosting in, I'm going for the Jin uh, from like basically the back line. I basically delete his health um, like halfway and I'm able to actually finish off the kill on Nami. I'm able to burst down the Yone as well. Jin is firing his up from downtown, um, not much I can do because I have no idea where he is but since we got the double kill there we're going to just go back to lane quickly farm um, up the minions, clear the wave and we're gonna be able to back. Now off of that entire sequence we basically picked up uh, I believe it was like 3 kills so off of that we can actually get our entire Yomu's Ghost Blade and with the entire Yomu's Ghost Blade um, and going back to this round 2 of the dragon fight uh, we should be able to like may maybe like one shot someone so here see how much damage we can do when we charge up and try to launch our arrow no no one no target to launch to so we're not gonna launch it so we have a faster cooldown um Jin does get picked by my team so here we're gonna just go over to the dragon and uh as a team we're just gonna go ahead and pick up this dragon here Lux manages to full combo the Nami with the help of my arrow from downtown we're able to actually finish off the kill onto the Nami and also of course pick up really good first strike gold so now if we take a look at the gold uh, at the current moment, you can see that I'm like at 7.3k gold. That's like double the gold of the Jin, um, and like double the gold of like the vein. Like if you add the vein and the Jin together, you're not even at my gold. That's how much gold I have at the moment. I'm incredibly fed 5, 0, and 2. And of course in this particular game, if I did know I was getting this fed, I would have just gone fully tally. I would have gone like Ghost Blade into like Dust Blade or something like that. Um, in this game, there's like no shielding, so I'm not actually going for the, the Serpent's Fang. Like, um, we have like, you know, no shielding on Nami, um, no shielding on Ari, no shielding on Jin, no shielding on Vayne. We have like a W from Yone, but it's not worth to build, uh, build it for, uh, build the anti shield for like just one person, and like it's it's not a huge shield anyways. No locket or or uh, anything like that. Um, no barrier either, so no real use uh, for for the anti shield in my opinion. Huge fight breaks out at Herald. I'm trying to see if I can help out my team. Trying to get uh, down the, the uh, Yone, we're able to actually pick up the kill on Yone, but we get condemned by the vein. However, like at this point, we just do too much damage. You can see we just pick up an easy double kill onto uh, the vein, like uh, simply just too much damage. We like on that back uh, after the Yone boost, we actually picked up the boots of dynamism as well as another serrated dirt. So that's like 15, uh, 15 um, lethality from the from the uh, Yomu's Ghost Blade and eight from the other two sources. So that's like a total of 31 lethality. We have like 31 lethality. Um, just like you know, eight, eight minutes to the game, <coughs> and uh, unfortunately, Varus can't actually take sudden impact. If we could take sudden impact, um, this would be so much. Uh, it would be so much more lethal. Like Thirteen lethality from sudden impact is uh, uh, you know huge, but unfortunately, uh, Varus cannot take sudden impact. He doesn't have any like dashes or or like invisibility or anything like that. So regardless, here we're back into the lane and we're just farming up the minions. We have red buff, and you know we're gonna see what we can do. Uh, honestly, if we hit an ult on anybody, that whoever we hit the ult on should just get one shot. Here Yone is chasing very very deep in. He is of course basically the only chance the enemy team has. He's eleven and two at the moment, so we're very very keen uh, to shut him down. Vayne kind of tries to come to his rescue, but instead what is gonna happen is likely Vayne's gonna die for his sins. Here I managed to get the ult onto the Vayne. Um, basically end up killing her, Vayne, I'm uh, not Vayne, Orn takes the kill instead. Um, here we're gonna try to get the kill onto Jin as well, full charge, boom! I uh, just look at look at that damage, I did, he didn't even have any stacks of blight on him. If I just got like one auto attack, he would have just disappeared instantly. But yeah, so here we're gonna just quickly take the, the fruit, unfortunately Orn does end up dying to the ignite, nothing much we could have done to help him there. <coughs> look, just look at that Q, boom, boom, they're just all dead. Like, Lethality Varus, if you're a fan, is absolutely insane. Like, just, oh my goodness, you just one-shot both of them. Uh, one arrow, one auto-attack, one auto-attack, boom, boom, double kill. And yeah, it's honestly 
are honestly unfair at this point. So here we're going for maximum, maximum lethality. We skip the Sorella's Grudge. We go straight for the lethality first. Going for the Dust Blade. So total of 38 lethality you're over here. Can't really get too much more. Here, I was trying to actually just one-shot the Yone. I don't know why he managed to ult me here. Here I end up dying. But this didn't really make sense to me. If anyone knows why this is happening, just let me know in the comments below. But, but I don't know why. Uh, I, he got hit by my ult. He got rooted. How is he able to ult? That doesn't make sense to me. Like, is, is this something special about Yoni? Is he like unstoppable or something? But I have no idea. But I have no idea how he managed to ult me in the first place. But that doesn't really make any sense um, to me personally at all. I have no idea how he managed to get out that ult. I had stasis. I had ghost. I had flash. I just didn't use them because I didn't think that Yone ult would actually connect. So I honestly have no idea how um, Yone was able to ult me there. But Anyways, yeah, so because of that, we die. We have to be giving a shutdown to Yone, which is absolutely horrible. Now, if you take a look at the goal, Yone actually has more gold than me, and he's like he has the most gold in the game. So that's, like, really problematic, because, as I said, Yone is the main way the enemy team comes back into this. My team, uh, you know, we have a squishy Twitch, squishy uh, Lutz, and I'm pretty squishy as well. So it could be trouble. Here, I try to up the Yone. I get condemned by Vayne. I'm going to just splash over and try to run away. <coughs> Here I actually try to snipe the dragon, but the dragon ends up moving because it aggroes onto, I believe, Lux. And it actually moves, so a bit unlucky there. Now the thing about Lethali Varus is your effective range is huge because of how much range your Q has. So here you can see I'm actually just running around the edge of the fight and seeing if like there's anything I can do to help my team. Uh, I'm not just recalling and just running away, unlike other ADCs that, uh, that you know, cannot fight unless they're in relatively close quarters. So here I'm gonna back, and now I'm actually gonna go for the Serelda's Grudge because now, um, you know, that's enough Lethali. We don't need another third Lethali item. We're gonna go for Serelda's Grudge for the Armor Pen instead, as well as the Slow, of course. And here, just helping out the Twitch to pick up the Red Buff faster. Okay, Red Buff acquired, and here I'm just gonna go ahead and just farm the Krugs as well. And now at the current moment, Baron is actually alive. So that's why the, that's the main reason why we're not showing on bot wave, because that would mean the enemy team knows that I'm not with the team, and they're able to perhaps start Baron. Here, Vayne gets caught by Lux combo, gets one shot, um, and now our team has a pretty major advantage. So here we're gonna pick up the the uh, blue buff. Of course, Varus is extremely mana hungry. Here, Nami gets caught. Boom! Varus arrow from downtown. Lux finishes off the kill with an auto attack. Jin gets caught as well, uh, but is able to flash away. Yone tries to go in, uh, gets a relatively good out, and uh, here I'm trying to see if we can snipe down. We end up sniping down the Jin. Uh, I was kind of going for the Yone, but hitting Jin is fine as well. And now we're gonna just back off just a little bit. Now, honestly, Baron could maybe be an option, but Yone is still alive and he's really fed, so I'm a little bit afraid of that. Here I'm just clearing up the, the minions. Yone is really low. Vayne is trying to help. Yone does end up dying eventually to the Twitch. But Twitch dies to the to the vein, and here I'm just going to up the vein and just try basically just one shot her. I got saved by the locket from Leona. I think I would have died without the locket, so good locket from Leona. And you can see I got 153 gold from like that combo from first strike. Now, obviously Varus, uh, Lethali build does insane uh, burst damage, and because of your insane burst damage, you're gonna get a lot of gold from first strike in the mid and late game. Now, of course, we already have like three full items, almost four full items at this point, so. Uh, the kind of damage that we're doing, we should be getting like you know triple digit kind of gold if we combo correctly. And yeah, so here Baron is up, so of course we're gonna go to the general like Baron area and you know, just secure the general area setup possibly for Baron. And here we're trying to see if we can get a catch onto the Ari. Um, get a, a good like Q onto the Ari, but not too much aside from that. Yoni tries to go in, where it doesn't hit us, so it's fine. Uh, Orn actually gives us the Veil, but I didn't actually really need it. From downtown, we're going to try to hit an arrow. doesn't hit anybody. We're going to go to avoid uh, the wave. And here, my team is basically just all dying. Not too much I can do here. I'm trying my best to just hit whoever I can and do whatever damage I can. Lux is kind of split pushing at the moment, so she's going to like get caught if she doesn't leave. Um, so she's going to actually leave now. Ari is actually pretty low as well, but if I get hit by that charm, I might just get one shot by the, the enemy team. So enemy team is actually going for Baron at this point. Now just take a look at uh, uh, what's going to happen here. Here I'm going to, uh, Lux actually gives me a brief vision of the Baron. So here I'm just trying to snipe down the Baron. 
I'm going for the snipe. Boom, I end up hitting uh, Ari instead, and Ari just ends up dying uh, from like over half health. Fortunately, I'm not able to get the Baron Steel, and and um, just we are basically just gonna run away. Unfortunately, enemy team does get Baron because we did lose that fight there. Now here, before they can use their Baron to empower this wave, I'm gonna quickly just clear out this wave. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, and yeah. So here, I'm just gonna farm the Gromp as well. Um, basically, just farming whatever we can. Not full build yet. Almost full build. We want that GA. Orn did, of course, give us the, the uh, sharing to allow us to buy items outside of the base. So we're just a little bit uh, of gold off getting our GA. So I'm trying to farm wherever I can and trying to get GA as fast as possible. Dragon is coming up in 10 seconds. So with any hope, uh, the enemy team can try to contest Dragon and we can basically fight them and remove their Baron buffs. Of course, we can't really remove Baron buffs anymore, but we can still kill... Uh, kill them and without when when they're dead Baron buff does nothing so here twitch full commits onto a nami for some reason and basically gets almost one shot here i'm gonna just chase ari down quickly just get a quick pick on ari with our ghost and uh, we basically end up uh, killing both ari and nami but twitch is like basically one hp he has to recall and uh, because of that we are gonna just do dragon but we're gonna have to wait for him to come for the smite Jin uh, actually decides to oh my team does the correct thing by turning and killing the Jin and going for like the rest of the enemy team like Yone and Vayne. Here I'm keeping the Dragon aggro as you can see while trying to help my team at the same time. This allows Twitch to come over and secure um, the Dragon while I go over and see if I can help out in any way. Turns out, you know, they already scampered away so n nothing can be done against Vayne and Yone. But yeah. So here just one shot the wave with the arrow and I'm half health, half mana, so not exactly in the best of states, but I'm just gonna maintain our distance, get the root onto the Yone, trying to um, trying to one shot the Yone, Yone goes into the GA. Uh, once again, we're just staying far behind because we know Ar we do know Ari's there, she was on vision. Here I'm gonna stasis, prevent Ari from actually killing me with the aura deception there, and we're gonna flash away. Here we're trying to get the snipe, we actually get the snipe onto the Ari and Vayne dies to Orn, so ends up being relatively uh, favorable. Me and Orn do end up surviving, and we kill two of them. Uh, of course, Nami, Jin, and Yoni are still alive, but all things considered, how uh, me and Orn were both about to die, and getting two kills instead is uh, honestly couldn't ask for too much more. Now, at this point, again, I'm pretty close to getting my GA. I'm just trying to get a little bit more gold on the map to try to get myself the GA. Uh, Elder Dragon is gonna spawn, and the next Baron is also gonna spawn, so. A lot of objectives coming up on the map. Here I'm desperately just trying to get some first strike goal and just get some goal here to get GA. Just get enough uh, GA completed so in the in the Elder Dragon fight if I die I can get the revive uh, here. So you can see the enemy team is not exactly ready for Elder Dragon yet. Twitch is trying to secure ourselves the red buff and of course I'm gonna be able to get the buff share. And here all the both teams are grouping for the Elder Dragon fight. This is gonna be a really huge and important fight. Um, Nami ends up taking a good chunk of damage here. Now my team is going to commit to trying to do the Elder Dragon. Ari Charm goes wide. Uh, Our Deception doesn't really hit uh, anybody either. Um, here Vayne is trying to come in. Jin is trying to launch his bullets from downtown. Um, Ari tries to, to ult in. Uh, Jin basically just ends up dying. Here we're able to get the Yoni. We're able to get the Vayne as well. And they're just basically just chasing down kills at this point. Just need to snipe the Ari. Um, boom, we do get it and Elder Dragon kills them all and with the entire enemy team dead we get a triple and we're able to just end the game right here so amazing 17 110 um, performance full build full lethality and unfortunately we did have that one death um, which is in my opinion a bit uh, pretty understandable because I have no idea how that Yoni managed to ult anyways gonna leave you guys with the stats as usual thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye